Okay, so welcome everybody to the first. Shh. <laughs> welcome everybody to the first uh, round of contributed sessions in, the, in this conference. And I'm Hanna Shevchikova from the University of Washington, and I'm going to chair this session on Shiny One. And there will be a session on Shiny Two on Friday morning. Uh, we have a set of exciting talks lined up, and. Uh, the rules are the speakers will have 15 minutes for the presentations, and there will be two minutes left for questions. And so the first speaker is going to be Olga Miechwa Sulima from Epsilon in Warsaw in Poland. Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to start uh, with asking you a question. What do you think? Uh, how popular is uh, Shiny as a tag on Stack Overflow in 2017 among uh, our stats uh, questions? No, like give me the ranking. Like the second, first, 15, 20. Come on, time is ticking. <laughs> Second, who else? Third. third. It's actually third. <laughs> so this, this probably means uh, two things. It's a um, very popular package among our users, but it's not so easy to use it. Uh, that's why uh, today I want to share with you lessons learned uh, from the project I did with my team, uh, which involved uh, building a shiny application uh, that is uh, currently used in production by around uh, 700 uh, locked users. My name is uh, Olga Mirzva Sulima, and I'm a data scientist uh, at Epsilon Data Science. I use R every day. Um, I co organize Warsaw R user meetup. Uh, I co-founded the first Our Ladies uh, chapter in Poland, in Warsaw, and needless to say, I am also an uh, our uh, doc lady. So let's get started. Uh, the project that I will be talking today uh, involved building, sorry, a shiny, a shiny application uh, that is uh, currently used by 700 locked end users and is supporting their uh, decision making. And at this point, I want to stress that these people have never seen a Shiny app before. They know nothing about R. And to be honest, they don't really care that it's running uh, at the back of the application. Uh, the team which was building the app uh, consisted only uh, from the data scientists. Um, we started with two PowerPoint slides as mockups. And we had a working, like we had a prototype in Shiny the next day, and we had a working demo after the two weeks. But from there, we still uh, had a long way to go. The solution was delivered uh, for BCG, uh, who at the end uh, we made a very happy client. But before we got there, we had to face three major challenges that I will be talking today user interface, user experience, and scaling. I think majority of us over here have quite high expectations from um, what the app should look like. This is what uh, we are used to. Companies build uh, whole departments uh, that focus only on making uh, the application uh, looks nice. These are front-end developers, graphic designers, uh, and so on. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I think there is um, uh, the people expect uh, the same uh, from the app, uh, Shiny app. It needs to look good. So uh, let me start with uh, showing you the uh, screen of the Shiny app that, in my opinion, uh, looks quite good. It has a, a menu on the top which uh, directs you uh, to the subpage. After clicking it, the content is organized in the containers um, with colorful labels uh, displaying the, uh, the content um, of the container, 
Uh, the tables are nicely styled, uh, containing uh, extra elements like uh, setting a ranking, and in the middle, um, the content is placed in the reactive cards. This look was achieved uh, thanks to a shiny semantic uh, package, which is available on CRN and GitHub. And basically what the package does, it allows you to use semantic UI component within your Shiny app. Uh, it's an alternative to a currently available uh, bootstrap in Shiny. And the package is a domain specific language allowing you to wrap HTML tags. So the package downloads and imports the uh, semantic UI CSS classes. So you can give the semantic UI look to your Shiny and the markdown uh, reports. It creates the, what's really important for Shiny users, that it creates the uh, abstraction, enabling you to define Shiny input and Shiny text inputs. It also contains um, some predefined, more complex elements ready to use as an R function, like uh, multi, uh, uh, multi uh, selection uh, drop downs and so on. Using uh, Shiny Semantic, we were able to give uh, the app modern look and uh, drop the graphic designer uh, from the process. So at that point, uh, we had nice looking application, but unfortunately it was uh, working quite slow. The first problem uh, we had was filtering, which was uh, filtering uh, on a, to a single element from really huge tables, which was done in the backend of the app. Um, at Epsilon, uh, we are uh, big fans of tidyverse approach, but unfortunately, sometimes it's not enough. So we looked for al alternative solutions, and we decided to go for data table indexing, uh, which after setting a key on the column, allows you to perform uh, a search 25 times faster than using the player. And this was huge improvement for us. Uh, another problem we had uh, was regarding the filtering in the front end elements. Uh, so we had to go for the server side solution and build our own uh, API for that. Mm. So you may ask at this point why we didn't use uh, shiny select size for that. Um, because of the three reasons. We want to have to have a nicer UI. We wanted to give user more flexibility to search. As you can see in the example, a uh, user can search both on the client name and the client, client ID in the same field, and this list can be further expanded. And last but not least, we wanted to have our custom uh, search algorithm at the back to further optimize the performance. It's actually quite easy to build your own API in R. You can use the register data uh, object from Shiny um, to set up an API. Uh, as in the example, uh, the function register search uh, would return a JSON with the result, and the search query, which is the bolded line, uh, is our own uh, search query algorithm. So using the data table indexing and having our own uh, server-side API uh, improved the performance of the application. However, um, we faced few challenges regarding uh, rendering the components. So um, we had part of the output hidden in model windows, uh, which is the top image. This is how the model window looks like. It's subordinate uh, to the main page of the app. And accordions, um, which, is the, um, which is the output that after clicking is expanding like the accordion. And turns out that Shiny is not rendering the hidden output by default. Uh, it's an optimization built in Shiny. But what you can do is to uh, change the output options and um, set suspend when hidden uh, to true, and then Shiny uh, would rent the hidden output. But you need to be really careful um, when doing so, uh, because when you have dozens of hidden elements in your app, uh, they, will, uh, rent every, like they will rent and re-render every time, 
which will, I guarantee you, slow down your application and might be never uh, requested by the user. And another challenge uh, we faced uh, regarding the rendering of the component was also related to a shiny built-in optimization, um, meaning that the reactive values, uh, they break the reactivity chain if a value doesn't update. Um, and for us it was a problem because uh, we wanted to optimize uh, the front-end element front elements and only render them um, when, the output, oh, when the output changes, but not when the user sets the, the input. So we use the reactive to keep the state um, of the reactive value. And in a certain situations, uh, this was not re-rendering. So um, we decided to use the reactive trigger uh, to solve this problem. This is a concept introduced by Jo Cheng, uh, the author of Shiny. It is a simple fa um, function that allows you to connect two elements uh, of your Shiny app, and every time uh, the one element uh, changes, this will trigger the change uh, in the other uh, element that is connected to it. Um, and I really like the uh, comparison then Dina Tully made on his blog and described the reactive trigger as a button that triggers the reactivity, but programmatically. I think it, like, it really nicely described uh, what this simple and powerful uh, trick does. So uh, having the reactive trigger, we were able to optimize the rendering of the components and avoid um, unnecessary, unnecessary uh, rendering. Uh, so the scale-up. This was a huge challenge because um, we have a substantial number of users uh, which were using the application, so we had to make sure that the app will be always available. And in order to do that, uh, we used the load balancer, which basically improves the distribution of the workload across the multiple servers. Um, we had multiple instances of the same uh, Shiny app running in the container on the multiple Shiny servers. And we took the authorization uh, to a separate level of our stack. Uh, this is how the architecture uh, looks like. Uh, so when the user uh, logs in, it's directed um, by the proxy to a, a container. It's a Docker container, uh, which is running the uh, Shiny application. And it makes sure that the user is directed uh, to an application uh, with the minimal load, so making sure that um, app will be uh, available. And the solution is compatible with Amazon EC2, Microsoft Azure, and on-premises. And the authorization can be done by OF0 um, and HTTP O. So I hope that I uh, prove that the data science, science team can efficiently scale production-ready uh, Shiny apps with UI and UX focus quickly and aesthetically. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions? Will someone pass the microphone or? Uh... So the question is, uh, how many users uh, can uh, one server uh, handle? Um, to be honest, uh, to be honest, it depends, and. Um, I think we had around uh, 10 instances of the app uh, running at the back. So um, more or less it's around uh, 70 users, but it depends. And, but uh, together with me is my colleague uh, who was involved in building the, uh, the load balancer solution. So maybe Marek, if you can raise your hand. 
so maybe Marek afterwards can uh, answer this question in more details to you. Okay. Users, uh, which users? Can you repeat? At the same time. So, uh, how many users uh, we manage at the application at the same time? Uh, I think at the beginning, when uh, we were doing the testing, it was uh, more than 100 users that was using the app at the same time. Yes? Uh, as I said, I, I'm, to be honest, a shiny developer, and uh, it's quite difficult for me to answer the questions about the infrastructure of the load balancer. Uh, so I think uh, my colleague, Marek, uh, he is more comfortable to answer you, uh, you this uh, question. Yes? Uh, it's loaded in the memory, in the app. Yes? How do we do the updates? Um, so the updates, um, they actually have to be uh, then uh, manually. So every, um, and this is uh, cu currently, it's done by the client who is using the app. They have a script, uh, and every time they upload a, a new data to the server, uh, they need to run the script uh, that will uh, refresh the data and uh, restart the application. And these are the Ansible scripts that uh, does that. Yes? Uh, so we had, um, I think, around um, up to 10 uh, tables with more than uh, 10, 10 million rows but I don't know the uh, exact size of the files. Are there any more questions? Okay, thank you very... Uh, can I take just one more question? Yeah. Yes? Um, well, so we started... Um, so this was the specific request from the client to do it in Shiny, uh, and... Uh, they were really happy with the result, but uh, when it came to deploying the app uh, and having so many locked users, uh, this was a challenge uh, because, as you all know, uh, Shiny Server Pro is a quite expensive solution to have it for 700 uh, people. So at that time, they, the client wanted to change to something else. Uh, but since we invested so, so much in this app, uh, we decided that we can make it uh, work and not use the Shiny Server Pro. So that's the answer. Sorry? It's uh, running in the uh, Shiny Server. So the, uh, the, the Shiny Server. There are multiple instances of Shiny Servers. So this is not the Pro version. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to finish. I am happy to talk to you uh, during the break. Thank you very much.